Scientology. It's been around for a long time, ever since L. Ron Hubbard wrote his first book. I think it was around 1953, 52, 53. Scientology has been around. And a lot of people consider it a religion. A lot of others consider it a faith. It's considered a business. It's considered dangerous by some people. And there's a lot of Scientologists in Ireland. A lot of people following the, the philosophy that L. Ron Hubbard laid down in his books in the 50s. But they've crossed swords now with someone that I think they will resent, or sorry, regret crossing swords with. And because this is someone who won't let them alone. And the more they poke her, the more she'll fight back. I'll talk to Fiona O'Leary next. 18 said Scientology is something about which much has been written. Some very controversial. People, some people describe it as a faith. Some people describe it as a philosophy. Some people describe it as a cult. It is followed and espoused by some very famous people. People like John Travolta is a Scientologist. Uh, Isaac Hayes, the musician and producer, is a Scientologist. Tom Cruise is a Scientologist. And Kirstie Alley is a Scientologist. A lot of actors and actresses have followed the path of, of Scientology. As I said, first brought to us in the early 50s by L. Ron Hubbard. I read one of his books um, in my college days. I think everybody read an L. Ron Hubbard book at some point or another. I can't remember what was in it now, but I I remember reading it. Fiona O'Leary, though, um, as I said before, you're not someone that will take what's going on with them lying down. Good morning. Morning, PJ. Thanks for having me on. What? Now... We know you from your campaigns to do with autism and we know you mm-hmm. from your campaigns against uh, uh, you know, anti- the anti-vax movement. But what has happened between you and Scientologists? Um, well, I've been researching Scientology for a few years now and what I've discovered is that they're very much um, linked to these quack treatments that are being given to autistic children. Uh, Scientology or anti-psychiatry, they don't believe in autism. They don't see it as a real condition. They don't believe in ADHD. And what they're trying to do is basically offer uh, children and adults with these conditions bogus therapies um, which usually involve supplements and um, going in a sauna. Uh, Pretty much the teachings of Hubbard. So he had a thing called purification rundown where you would have to literally go into a sauna for maybe up to three weeks at a time which is really dangerous for children and take really lethal doses of niacin that's vitamin b3 not recommended by any health professional this has been given to autistic children i've discovered this there's a big center in america called the mace kingsley center and they're doing this right now not just to children in the scientology cult i don't call it a religion sorry but to children that are not in Scientology. I rang the center. I reported it to Child Protection in Florida recently. Now this new building is opening in Fur House and it's meant to be the European hub. Because England is leaving Europe, Scientology want to move all of the Europe kind of business into Dublin. Into Dublin. Okay. Yeah, so this is really concerning. And um, What kind of a base do they have in Ireland, Fiona, do you know? um, Well, they have two premises as it stands. One in Abbey Street where they do the courses and the training and the auditing. So auditing is basically the brainwashing where you hold those little cans and you're interrogated. This is happening to babies. I've seen this happening to babies Mm. age one, two, three. So they leave their parents, they're brought into a room, and I don't know how they manage to engage with babies, but apparently they can even engage with non-verbal autistic children. I suppose we should say, and it's Mm -hmm. important to say, Mm -hmm. that joining Scientology or engaging with Scientology is no more illegal than engaging with Fianna Fáil. No, it's not legal. I mean, and, and to be honest so, with you, um, that, that, that is, that is the worry, I suppose, that, um, many people have, not just myself in Ireland right now, is that, um, there isn't any kind of laws against Scientology. But the, it's not really like a normal religion. I was brought up a Catholic, PJ. I didn't have to pay to do training courses on a regular basis. These courses can accumulate into four or five thousand, um, per course and go up to half a million dollars if you climb the bridge. So there's a big long bridge to get to different 
different levels and the higher you go the more money you put in so that's not like a normal religion and then taking these dangerous doses of vitamins which you have to do it is part of the techniques and the training that Hubbard wrote himself these are his words um, Hubbard also claimed that he could cure many illnesses so if you get cancer and you're a Scientologist you're advised to just follow his training programs and not go to a doctor I've even heard of people dying uh, from cancer because they wouldn't get chemotherapy so they're anti-vaccine as well it's literally the same kind of stuff we're campaigning against in recent times I've also discovered that there's a UK Scientologist endorsing LMS bleach for autistic children I spent the last two days trying to educate two people in the UK they're two big prominent Scientologists um, not to promote this online they're doing it right now yeah. they're telling people that research should be made into bleach animus for autistic children and because of me speaking out they now have created a petition another one online on change.org against me so this is what they do if you do have the, the bravery to speak out and say that this is wrong and it's wrong to offer bogus treatments for autism this is what Scientology do basically it's called fair game and I'm being targeted right now mm. as one thing I think that probably gives them credibility mm -hmm. uh, in, in the eyes of a lot of people is just take three names John Travolta yep. Tom Cruise Kirstie Alley A-list yep. celebrities A-list actors part of this that gives it credibility among a lot it's of people it, it does, PJ, and I mean, that, that's the real problem, I suppose. What it is really, I think, uh, what Scientology is, in my opinion, is that people go there and they're kind of led to believe that they can be better versions of themselves. It's almost like... Um, counselling in a way, but in a very extreme way. Um, like for the auditing process, I was looking at um, what they, Robert had written for children, how to spy on children and the questions that are asked. They're very personal. They're not normal. They actually ask children questions about the parents. Are your parents arguing with each other? Have you any bad secrets in your head? It's so in invasive. It's really like interrogation. So this isn't like normal going to see um, your counsellor or psychologist. This is really just about kind of getting into your brain and breaking you down and the more you're broken down the more training you have to do so it's a bit like a pyramid yeah. scheme and it's, it's you're always on this wheel to try and better your life and what happens in the end is that Scientology breaks people down and if you decide to leave the cult you are disconnected so other family members will view you as being not welcome anymore and well that's if they were members of Scientology themselves if they weren't that was no but if it's like a family that I've, I've spoken to some some people that were in the cult and they've told me the most you know really heartbreaking stories where family members are still in and they're not allowed to see their grandchildren they're not allowed to call them they, you know that you're shunned basically you're, you're disconnected and um, mm -hmm. it's just a very cruel bizarre just um, operation some you know? of the figures there's more than 50,000 people have taken their test, their personality yeah. test in the Dublin centres. Mm -hmm. And this guy, and as I said, I read uh, an L. Ron Hubbard book in college. I think everybody... Mm, but it's I, I think now. everybody did. I can't even remember. It was 30 yeah. years ago, more and more. But it was just, it read like a book of daft philosophy. Yeah. It, it read like a well, book of... It's science fiction. I mean, that's what it really is. Yes. I mean, and, and like the beliefs are like that aliens are attached to our bodies. So that's what these people are being told is that you've got all of these uh, thetans attached to your body. And that's why you have to try and keep ridding them because that's what makes you have this kind of, um, you know, mind that isn't functioning. And, and, they and want yet, people to be clear, you know, they don't he, want them to have emotion. It's really about cleaning your mind to he's focus. A, he, he, he holds an interesting Guinness World Record. He does, yeah. his, his books have been translated into more languages than anybody oh, no. else. The only book translated into more languages than L. Rod Hubbard's books is the Bible. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's scary. The one thing I want to say that is really important about what's happening in Ireland as well and around the world are the front groups that Scientology have. Um, because there aren't as many members as there were before, thankfully, on a global level, but they are operating front groups. One of them is CCHR, Truth About Drugs, Narconom, and these programs are targeting teenagers and schools. There was a recent um, discussion in News Talk, actually, about this. And um, these front groups are claiming to save humanity and doing good in the community, but what they're actually doing is trying to get people to join up with their cult. And um, again, the Narconom program, which is a program to rehabilitate drug addicts to help people that have addiction, and their, their program is the same thing it's the teachings of Hubbard so you're not allowed any medication you have to follow the protocols of Hubbard and do these mm. rundowns these purification rundowns so none of it is scientifically he's, proven he's, the only thing is Fiona people are free to choose to follow 
whatever Maybe. philosophy they wish, be it, Catholic, be it Catholicism, be it Protestantism, be it the Jewish faith, be it Scientology, God knows, be it, be it the GAA. But, uh-huh. you know, they're entitled to follow whatever they want. It's a free country. Uh-huh. So, we have to be well, careful. When, ch- when it comes to children, that's where I draw the line. So what my concern is, again, are the children. The children that are being subjected to these unscientific therapies, which is what's going on. I have spoken to um, the head woman here in Dublin, if you want me to say her name, I've no problem saying that. But her name is Margaret McNair, so she's running the National Affairs Office. I've had conversations with her, three or four, on the phone. She's told me that they're going to be working with children with disabilities and special needs with these programs. And she's told me that she's an interest in autism. She's also told me that she's anti-vaccination and that she supports Andrew Wakefield. So this is a real concern for me. This, I don't care about the adults believing in Buddha or God or whatever. That's fine. But when it comes to working with children and trying to um, get parents to walk away from professional care and saying that autism is like a fabricated condition, this mm. is what I was told on the line, mm. and that ADHD is fabricated you know, they are completely against psychiatry. Right. They, they see it as Satan. And they are trying to get parents yeah. with children with mental health issues and conditions like autism to walk away from professional doctors and follow their bogus program. Qu- this question is what's going question on. for you, Fiona. Is it true that Scientology is banned in Germany? In some countries it is banned. And I think it was, they tried to get it banned in another country recently in Europe and it failed. They have lots of money. This is the bottom line here. That premise is at Fur House, which could have been used as a school or for kids with special needs, I've spoken to several people in that area. They're absolutely outraged. Mm. Um, that, the huge building that mm. could have benefited the community is now be handed over to a bunch of, of um, to a cult that wants to hurt okay. people. That building just, just was six million. Of, okay. I, I have a, a former Scientologist who I'm yep. looking forward yep. to talking to. But mm-hmm. just in terms of the MMS, and we've talked about that many times, this uh-huh. bleach therapy, yes. let's call it what it is. The guy behind that, we've, mm-hmm. all, we've talked about him, um, yes, yes. Jim Humble, yes, he, he left Scientology. Yes. I think he was booted out because he was even too crazy for the Scientologist, but there is a connection there, and, that, and this is really important, PJ, because this is my speciality, you know that, is trying to stop this bleach treatment. And what I've witnessed I mean, can I name these two Scientologists that are promoting this? Am I permitted to do that? Because it's on Twitter, it's on social media. Go ahead, if they're promoting it publicly, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, Gemma Harris and John Woods. So they are two huge Scientologists in the UK. On the 6th of October, Scientology have a huge, big um, meeting celebration. It's called the IAS. That's the International Association of Scientology. It's like Christmas Day for Scientologists. So every Scientologist gathers in East Grinstead in the UK. Tom Cruise, John Travolta... David Miscavige is the leader of Scientology now. They're all going to be there. There's thousands of people attend this event. And those two people, Gemma Harris and John Wood, are a huge part of that movement. I think John Wood is related to the Kenwood guy who made the the mixers, you know, the Kenwood chef. Lots of money. Um, So they are the ones that are advocating this right now on social media. Gemma Harris has hundreds of tweets saying that it's legal. It's not legal in Ireland, and it's not legal in England. You can't put bleach into your child, okay? If you are found out to be doing that, you will be investigated and prosecuted. That's what's happening. And um, she's saying that there should be more research. We have given them evidence, images, PJ, of children's insides burnt out of their bodies. They're laughing at it. They're endorsing it. She's also working with um, the NMS quacks in Ireland. Vin Byrne from People's Internet Radio, he wants research. He's promoting it. And right now, I'm being harassed by the Bleach okay. Brigade and the Scientology cult well, this no, new no, petition, no, no, you know? No better, no better woman to stand up to it. Good to talk to you, as always. Thanks so much, People Pete. can follow thanks what so, you're doing thanks. on Facebook. Yeah, thank you so much, PJ. Not PJ, that... can I just say one thing before you hang up? We, yes. are doing a pro- we are doing a huge protest in Dublin on the 14th to protest the opening of this new building because it is set to open around the 14th of October. It might be subject to change maybe the week before, but we're calling out today on all TDs and politicians to support our protest on the 14th at Fur House in Dublin to help us stop this cult getting a foothold in our country, to keep our children safe and to let have children professional, scientific um, support, not quackery. So anyone out there, please join us on the 14th. Thank All you. All right, Fiona, thank you. 1850 I'll talk to someone who was a member of Scientology for a number of years and... Uh, He'll tell me what it was like. 96 FM. Fergal was just checking out the status of Scientology in Germany in request to people asking whether it's actually banned there. Not as such is the answer. It's, it's kind of complicated. It's not really banned, 
but it's it's frowned upon and you can only do certain things um it's the, there's a they contest whether it's just a, a religious or an ideological movement um and, and our commercial activity greece and st petersburg in russia uh, are the only places where it's actually been banned in greece uh, in 1998 they they liquidated the assets of the organization but they didn't ban scientology in st petersburg's they have the freedom to worship and freedom of organization but they may not uh, give out medical advice. That's about the only real legal limits on them. Uh, we may come back to this after 11, but I will start with John McGee now first. John, good morning to you. Good morning to you. You're a former Scientologist, I believe. I am, I am. Okay. You joined when? I joined in 2005, late 2005 in Dublin, Abbey Street. And what encouraged... I mean, like I said, I, around the 80s, I would have read... Ron Hubbard's books, I think everybody did at some point or, or, or other, mm -hmm. see what the guy was all about. What encouraged you to go in and sign up? Oh, I was curious about it, you know, the controversy that uh, surrounded it. I just said I'd give it a try. So I went in and did their personality test and I was pretty much signed up on course straight away and I got hooked. You know, it's very uh, seductive. They love bomb you straight away to make you feel like you're in a good place, a safe place. And uh, I've at the start, I really thought uh, I was onto something, and I, I figured that if you're spending that much money, you might just get something in return for it. It might just be crazy enough. To I, I get to the money in a second, but what what kind of things did they tell you at the time that nobody else was telling you? Oh, that you will be able to empower yourself um, to such an extent that you can create better conditions in your life, materially, spiritually, the works. Sounds like reading the secret. Yeah, I, I discovered the secret after I discovered Scientology and I said, oh God, this is all I needed to buy. <laughs> but uh, I don't dare do anything like that. So you got involved. How much did you spend? Oh, I got away lightly. I, I only spent uh, ten and a half grand in, in the three, less than three years I was there. Uh, plenty of other people I was with remortgaged the homes. Um, I know people in there who will not speak to me anymore, but they've spent in excess of 400000 to be abs absolutely bankrupt. Yes, the counselling is very expensive. They call it auditing, but it's counselling. It's basically interrogations on the e-meter, so it's like a crude lie detector you're hooked to. Um, well, this counselling can cost up to €200 Euro an hour. What are you spending? Um, what, are you, what are you being counselled on? You're just getting stuff off your chest, and they have a fixation on sex and sexuality, so they like to get your innermost secrets, your darkest secrets, all your sexual indiscretions down on paper. They record everything, and this can uh, be possibly used against you later on if you decide to cross them or to leave, and that's why John Travolta is uh, held in their within their cage for so long. John Travolta has been out of Scientology for years. He just cannot leave, that's all. Have you? Maybe because I think so many celebrities are involved, that probably yes. makes it attractive and to a lot of impressionable yeah, that's, people. Yeah, that's what lends some credibility, you see, that's the problem. If it's good enough for Tom Cruise, it's good enough for me, that's the attitude that goes around. But the thing is, uh, you know, if you see some of the celebrities that are very arrogant, like Kirsty Alley gives the middle finger to anybody who crosses Scientology, who gives out about Scientology, and she bans them, she blocks them from Twitter. Like, that just goes to show the arrogance that uh, can be uh, cultivated within you if you join Scientology, because it... it it, it harvests, uh, sorry, it um, massages the ego to such an extent that you feel you're superior to everybody else who's a non-Scientologist. Okay. Scientologists have absolute contempt for the non-Scientology world, by the way. They might uh, have these front groups saying that they can benefit society, but they actually call us WOGs, W-O-G. It's a derogatory term for a non-Scientologist. Okay. I'm going to uh, come back to you after 11 o'clock, John. We'll talk about the time you were within there and what convinced you to try to get out and what you faced when you did eventually leave. So if I'll just put you back onto the lads and come back after 11 o'clock if you wouldn't mind. John McGee, former Scientologist, spent ten and a half grand in about four years, saw people remortgage their houses and give it to the Scientology movement. I'll come back to him after 11 o'clock. On the subject of Scientology, reminded there during the news, John Travolta's son, Jet, died uh, in what are now considered to be quite suspicious circumstances. He was a teenager and he died of a seizure, believed to be an epileptic seizure. But the thoughts now are that, or the general consensus now is that John Travolta's son had epilepsy. It wasn't a random seizure, that he wasn't receiving any medication and that he had autism, which, of course, Scientology says doesn't exist. And one thing that happens with autism, particularly in boys, 
it is extremely common that young boys with autism can develop epilepsy in their early teens. It's extremely common. Um, trust me, I know. And that that's what happened, in fact, to, to Jet Travolta. That's, that's the belief. Um, and that's why one of the reasons, I think, that canned it with John Travolta and that he tried to get out of Scientology. I'm still with John McGee, who himself got out of Scientology. You've heard that version of the story, I've no doubt, John, haven't you? Oh, I did, PJ, did indeed. Um, because Scientology don't believe in conventional medicine and that they believe psychiatrists are the root of all evil, they will not uh, allow their children mm. or any, anybody belonging to uh, the Scientology doctrine or the faith, if you will, in inverted commas, uh, take such medications. So they... Um, the jet travolta wouldn't have been receiving the proper medical care. Yeah, uh, because it's very uh, common for young boys with autism to yeah, develop so a, a mild epilepsy in their early teens. As I say, take it from me, I know. Uh, my son did that. I have with my son. And it's very, very easily controlled with the right yeah. medication. But yeah. it has to be controlled. And the belief is that that's what happened to jet travolta. Yes, because uh, they believe in treating medicines with uh, auditing and vitamins and high, unnaturally high doses of vitamins, dangerously high. And uh, they don't recognize, um, they don't recognize um, disorders like autism or um, any sort of um, cognitive impairment. Okay. You spent ten and a half grand over three years and then you decided, I think, I need to get out of this. Was it down yeah. to the amount of money it was costing you or what else was the problem? It wasn't down to the amount of money it cost me. It, what happened was I was engaged in a a very unsafe uh, psychotherapeutic practice. By the way, I have to get it in here that everyone in science, nobody in Scientology is qualified to be a counsellor. It's manned by a completely unqualified personnel, but they are actually engaging in discarded uh, psychotherapeutic techniques. And they're discarded for a reason because they're dangerous. So I was engaged in one of these techniques with uh, a guy I was twinned up with for this particular course. Right. And uh, during one of the commands I gave him. He had, a, he had a breakdown in front of me, a meltdown, and I'm not qualified to, uh, to diagnose anything like that, but I mean... But they I, convinced I, you yeah, that day that you yeah, could so, actually do this. Yes, and he was to do it on me. It could have been either one of us that fell down that day, but it happened to be him. So he had a meltdown in front of me because of what I was doing to him, and he begged me for help, and he said he was feeling terrible that the world, his world was caving in. This was in a, in a small room in Abbey Street. And what, I, what were you doing to him, John? Are I was... You? I was, um, after we stared into each other's eyes for in excess of an hour, because that's another, um, we hallucinated, I did anyway, uh, it's to bring him into present time, uh, apparently. And then I, the next procedure was for me to keep asking him to walk across the room and touch the wall and acknowledge that he's touched and I thank him for it and I get him to do it again. This can, I, can, I can do this up to 50, 100 times until something turns on within his mind. And it did. He had a, he had a meltdown. And... Um, I called the course supervisor who didn't know what to do, but he in turn called the auditor, that's the lead counsellor, he'd be the reverend of the Church of Scientology. You know, they borrow these ecclesiastical terms from uh, every other organisation. So the reverend comes in and tells me that, oh, he'll have to be sent to the, the Mecca of Scientology in St. Hill in the UK, if you want to mention that place earlier on, mm. so he could have repair, what they call repair auditing. Uh, but it'll cost him six six thousand euro and they can't do it until he comes up with the money first. So this man was in this state, and they were willing to leave him like this because of money. And uh, I said, that's it. That was curtains for me. And uh, I decided then I would stop going on course. But I remained uh, friendly with them because I wanted to spy on them and give information out to the anonymous protesters who used to protest outside. Yeah. So after I quit going on course, I remained in their hood books for another maybe two and a half years. Right. And uh, then I got exposed by giving an article to the... I did an article in the Irish Times back in 2011, and then that blew my cover. But, yeah, it, uh, yeah that was what happened. That's what convinced me to get out. It was because uh, it was an issue with money, that they were willing to leave that man in that state because uh, he didn't have the money first. And when they realized, or did they realize, that you were trying to get out? No, no, not at all. No, I'd show up to events and be all gung-ho with them, take, right. them out for co take a couple of them out for coffee, you know, and hang around with them, but I was gathering information and um, feeding it out to the protesters. They used to spend um, one day per month protesting outside every Scientology building in the world, actually, but Dublin was one of them. And they would keep tabs on people, do they, John? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They asked me my... They wanted to know... During an auditing session, they asked me all my family members' names, and these family members would be non-Scientologists. So I was, it was a, Scientology was a dirty secret to me, by the way, for me, by the way. I didn't 
kind of uh, spread it around to my family that I was involved in it. And they found out later. But uh, yeah, they, they would ask me family members' names, their occupations. These are the uncles I might see once every five years. And they, um, yeah, they keep tabs me like that. I have it. They encourage you to live in a, like a cloistered environment, share a house with other Scientologists, only date other Scientologists. Um, so they can keep an eye on you and then they will do knowledge reports. I mean, I lived with the Scientologist as a flatmate for a year and it turned out when I left, um, she had been writing knowledge, what they call KRs, knowledge reports on me, my movements when I came in, when I went out. Absolutely unbelievable. It's, it's um, like 1984 personified. Wow. So you're well and truly clear of them now. And this oh, is yeah, 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 absolutely. How About how many people are actually practicing? Yeah, you... Um, Probably exaggerated the numbers earlier on, but I'm, I'm being generous by saying there are less than 50 Scientologists in Ireland and they're all concentrated within the Dublin area. Okay. Looking at the premises there. Okay. You know, I, I know the local census, the census came out last year to say there was 86, but I do head count. I, when I protest there, I do head counts and you're lucky to see 12 people, uh, coming out of the place, you know, so collectively I'd say there are less than 50. So it's quite small. I, yeah. But they have complete contempt now, as I said before, for the outside world. They will tell you not to give money to like you mentioned the homeless crisis, some poor guy sleeping in a doorway earlier on. Yes. Scientologists believe that that man pulled in that condition because of past life sins. They believe in past lives and all that rubbish. And because he committed sin in a past life, he has deserved his condition now. Same with handicapped children. They were once criminals in a past life, so they deserve what they have now, according to Scientologists. But they won't tell you this until you have your foot in the door. They're homophobic. They believe that uh, gay people are covertly hostile and truly dangerous. And according to L. Ron Hubbard's doctrine, they should be disposed of without remorse or sorrow or with any consequence to the Scientologist. Wow. In the doctrine. It's absolutely hateful. Now, I didn't subscribe to that when I got in. I just wanted something a little bit left of center, left of field. Yeah. It's a bit crazy, but I wasn't uh, expecting pure evil along with the crazy, you know? Yeah. I've heard them compared, and, and and because I know a number of members of the Jehovah Witness community. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them I would consider to be a friend, a good yeah. friend. Um, I, I have... I, 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 I grimace when I hear this comparison between Scientologists and the Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, I, I think it's unfair. Pol- yeah, I say they're poles apart. You know? Scientology will seek to destroy every aspect of your life. You know, I'd imagine with, with other organizations like the JWs, you just leave and... You know, that's about it. Your family might fall out with you a little bit, but Scientology seek to destroy you if you leave. All right. All right. I'm glad you got out, John. Oh, thank you. I'm glad <laughs> you got out. Uh, ten grand light. But yeah. you, and by the way, your friend that had the breakdown, is he okay? Um, he no longer speaks to me. He remained loyal to them, even though I left on account of him. And did he come he, up with the six grand? I don't think he did. I don't think he did. He eked out a living. He, he had a very meager job and uh, he couldn't afford it. But they will work on him another way. You know, they'll just get him to keep coming in and doing the base, do the basic courses. You know, I don't believe that this so-called repair auditing would have helped him in any way because it's pure quackery to begin with. But the fact, the principle remains that they were willing to leave him in that state um, because he didn't have the money. All right. You know? John but McGee. Now, TJ, just one thing. Yes. You need to look out for the front groups now. They're targeting schools in Cork and... Are they? The, the Bishop, Bishop Brendan Kelly um, wrote an article in the Irish Catholic, I think, earlier on this year, warning schools, Church of Ireland schools and Catholic schools were targeted by their drug literature. But fortunately, um, they're wise to it now and... Uh, the what what organisations? Give me names. Uh, the, Truth about, the Truth About Drugs campaign. Okay. Foundation for a Drug-Free World and the Citizens Commission on Human Rights, and they're the, the, the latter are the guys who discourage you from taking your psychiatric medication. CCHR. And, yeah, CCHR. Yeah. Now, I know these are people who would probably say we've nothing to do with Scientology. But oh, they're everything. They're manned by, so there's all the staff members of Scientologists, and they like to use the term, oh, we're only sponsored by Scientology. Take it from me, they are Scientology, because I used to distribute their literature. All right. Okay, John McGee, great talking to you. Thank you very much.